I'm Robert Winston, I work at Imperial College, and I'm going to answer, or try to answer, some of the questions that you've asked us, complicated things about biology. Hi, I'm Dr Shanice O'Mara, and I'm originally a mechanical engineer, and I'm here to answer all your questions about the subject. Hello, my name is Dr Lewis Dartnell, and I'm a UK Space Agency Research Fellow at the University of Leicester. And what I'm going to try and do is answer some of your questions about outer space. Kathleen, age 15 from London, asks, what's the best thing to make a parachute out of? That's a great question. I'd love to know why you're asking this. Um, I would say that the three most important things are make sure the material is light because you're going to have to pack all of that material and it's going to be a vast amount of material into a small space so that you can carry it onto your back. The second most important thing is something that is strong because it's going to have to carry your weight and a huge volume of air underneath it. And on that note, it's going to have to be a material that's airtight because you can't make it out of sponge, for example, because air would just go straight through it. Emily, who's 13 from London, asks, as colds and common diseases change and they don't always have a cure, will we be able to find a common feature to all variations that is curable? The answer is no, I think, because uh, we will constantly have a fight against infection, particularly uh, as uh, viruses and bacteria mutate. That is, their DNA changes. It will change without any kind of predictable way and so we will have to find new ways of dealing with that all the time. Josh, who's 15 and from Dorset, asks what happens when something organic or inorganic crosses the event horizon of a black hole and what happens when that something reaches the centre of a black hole? Well, Josh, this is a, a great question and I think that falling into a black hole is possibly the most disgusting way that you could meet your end, that you could die in outer space. Because as you approach the event horizon, as you approach the lip, the outside of the black hole, you get subjected to what are known as tidal forces. The very powerful, fierce gravity of the black hole is tugging at your toes ever so slightly more strongly than the top of your head. So you get stretched out thinner and thinner in a process that's known as spaghettification. Jessica, age 17 from Kent, asks, is the cause of eczema due to a mutation in the DNA or partly due to environmental factors? It's a very complex question and we don't fully know the answer to it, but it's likely that eczema is not due to a change in the DNA, not the DNA itself, but how the DNA probably works. So it may be much more due to environmental factors, which may have some influence on the DNA, particularly in small children. But it is interesting because eczema does tend to run in families, so there probably is some heritable form of eczema. Holly, age 17 from Newcastle, asks, do you feel out of place as a woman in engineering? It seems like a man's job and not that appealing to me. Um, that's a really interesting question because as a woman in engineering, I have to say I was surrounded by a lot of men. But what's always really baffled me is that it's not really a man's subject, necessarily. I mean, it's for men, women, boys, girls, everyone that loves maths, really. Because engineering is about applying maths to real life situations. And that's definitely what I found the most fascinating. Danuki, who's 12 and lives here in London, wants to know is that life elsewhere in the universe. And this is actually exactly what my own science, what my research, is all about. I'm an astrobiologist and I'm interested in the search for life beyond our planet. And one of the things that I study and one of the things that gives us a lot of confidence that there might be life beyond our home world are some of the hardiest and most extreme loving life forms we find on Earth, the so-called extremophile organisms. And we find things surviving in very cold temperatures or very hot temperatures or in very, very salty water or very acidic water. And if we look beyond our solar system, out into the galaxy as a whole, in just the last 15 years or so, we've now discovered over 800 new worlds orbiting other stars out there in the night sky. Ian asks, if you had 50 billion, where would it best be spent on, searching space or the seas? Interesting question, because I think if I had 50 billion, uh, I'd retire. But going back to the question, I think, 
It's interesting because so much science and technology of our everyday lives has come out of space research, whether that's memory foam for mattresses uh, for your bed, or invisible braces, or um, Teflon, a very obvious one. But if you were to ask me personally where I'd spend the money, I would love to spend the money on searching the seas or searching more of our planet because I'm fascinated with our world. Uh, I'm fascinated with Earth. So rather than kind of deviating away from our planet, I think it would be more useful to look to nature. Anna, age 11 from London, asks, why does it hurt so much when you put salt in an open wound? Well, I think it's something to do with the nerve endings in the open wound being very much excited by the structure of any chemical which gets into a wound. Pretty well anything which is not supposed to be in the fluids in the body in high concentration will cause an intense irritation. It changes the water uh, content and it will also stimulate nerves in other ways, possibly by changing their electrical charge. Sophie, age 60, from North Wales, asks, what do you think the next big development will be in science and engineering? I think the reason why that question is uh, so interesting and quite tricky to answer is because science and engineering is a massive field. I think the next big developments uh, will probably be in health because everyone's interested in maintaining and improving their health. Me personally, I am watching the space of 3D printing because I absolutely love it and I think there is so much potential for it to grow and progress into all kinds of directions that we never dreamed of. Sam from Rochester, who's 10, asked, why do we close our eyes when we sneeze? I'll tell you the truth, I don't know, uh, but we don't always close our eyes. And of course, if you don't close your eyes, as Grace, age 16, asks, your eyes might pop out. That'll worry them.